Well, good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle on this bright, sunny, cool day. Clyde, you know I'm cold in my house again today. <laughs> I just bet you are. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on Cincy Lifestyle. Mona, on the last day of September. It is the last day, which means Halloween is about a month away, Clyde. Mm. And you know what? If you are trying to figure out a way to do trick or treat with the kids while staying six feet away, mm -hmm. a gentleman has an idea for you. It is a spooky six foot PVC shoot that he's going to to put out. I think we have a picture. Yes, he has this one. He's going <laughs> to put the candy in the shoot and the kids can hold their bags under it and get the candy. It's hilarious. But it's fun and it serves the purpose of the of um, keeping six foot of distance. So I love that story being really creative and you can try that too. Yeah, how cool is that? What a great idea that is. Well, we since That's, we're since we're talking about uh, it being September, October is close. It's time to think about the boys of October, if you will. Cincinnati Reds, just a reminder, folks yay. have their first playoff game today. Um, and, you know, this has been a tough season for them, but they've made it to the point that they're in the playoffs. So uh, be sure to keep an eye out for that game. Uh, the pitcher, I understand, is Trevor Bauer. So game one, go team. It's at noon according to Big Glenn, who knows, who knows. So anyway, and, and right quick, Mona, were you out and about at six this morning? Um, no, in my dreams I was, yes, oh. but not in reality. Oh, you missed a meteor this morning. Some folks might have seen it, mm. um, bright green flash in the sky uh, about six in the morning. A couple of our staffers saw it, so just a fascinating little something to see. Uh, so back to uh, le let's talk a little bit as we get into our program this morning. What a what better way to stay warm than in some stylish fall clothes because it is getting chilly out there. Well, the owner of a vintage boutique is standing by to tell us what's trending for fall and for uh, that we are grateful. Want to welcome Marcy Hahn, who is the owner of Down to Mars Vintage. Now that's a clothing shop here in town. Marcy, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me, Clyde. So, so let's talk about the name again, Down to Mars. How'd you yeah. come up with that name? <laughs> well, as I was telling you a little bit before, um, that has a couple of inspirations, um, but mainly I like to say that it's a play off the phrase down to earth. Um, so you'll get a little bit grounded and a little bit out of this world. Okay. All right. Well, then let's talk about what's grounded and what's out of this world that's really popular right now. So, you know, I carry anything in the boutique that's from 1940s to 1990s. Um, you can find a wide array of stuff in here, but right now a lot of people are looking for plaids, um, lacy stuff. The 90s stuff is really cool right now. Okay, so uh, as everybody knows, of course, we're in a situation where we need to be socially distant uh, and where we uh, need to be masked, that sort of thing. So how do folks get to your boutique to come in and check out stuff? What do they need to do? Make an appointment, perhaps? So I was operating by appointment these past couple months, but as of tomorrow, I am reopening um, without appointments. So I'll be open Wednesday through Saturday um, from 12 to 6, but we require everyone to wear a mask in store. We have hand sanitizer stations throughout. We ask that any clothes that you try on, we then put aside in order to be steamed and properly cared for for the next customer. So what are you finding uh, people are most interested in when they come into your store now? Is there a period of time they're most interested in or a style of dress? So a lot of people really dig that retro look. They like the 70s and the, and the 90s for sure. So I carry a lot of stuff in my boutique that's colorful, patterned, um, anything that's going to make you stand out and kind of give you a little spice to your wardrobe. So when you come in here, you might step a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Um, but that's what I like to get people to kind of explore different styles that they may not usually try. So you say the 70s and 90s. How, what do you think it is about those uh, two periods of time that are so interesting to you, uh, to your customers? You know, I really feel like history repeats itself a lot. 
um, in multiple ways. And I really feel like right now, whether in movies, literature, you see a lot of 70s references. Um, even, you know, music, you're kind of hearing a little bit more funk and stuff. So I really do feel like all those outward factors kind of subliminally influence, you know, how people are dressing. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah. uh, right quick, before we get away from you, let's make sure people know how to connect with you. Where are you located? What are your hours? Absolutely. And how can people connect uh, online, perhaps? So all social media handles are down to Mars Vintage, all spelled out, um, Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm located downtown in the Central Business District at 621 Main Street. And like I said before, hours are Wednesday to Saturday from 12 to 6. Okay. Well, Marcy, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you for having me. I hope you have a good day. You too. Mona? Well, it is possible to fall in love with a piece of artwork. And you can see that I fall in love with many if you're looking behind me. But um, bro twin brothers Jeff and John Winkle are two local artists combining their skills on one canvas. With that in mind, and Allie made a visit to their studio to learn how they could bring meaning to your walls. You can get rid of the pillow. You can get rid of the pillow if you need to. <laughs> Just throw it. Just throw it, seriously. There you go, perfect. And action. <laughs> well, now that we've made ourselves at home, it's time to talk about how to make your space a home, especially when it comes to the artwork on your walls. And Jeff and John of Jeff and John Winkle Studio are twin brothers who are no strangers to the matter. They both have a passion for art and design. Jeff, the graphic designer, and John, the painter. Together, they combine their skills to create meaningful, staple pieces of art for your space. Explain your style of paintings. What is your style? Oh, it's a mix between contemporary, representational, graphic, we, we love the mix of kind of small town grit with uh, beauty um, or with like the aesthetics of something that's beautiful against like the backdrop of something that's concrete. I've been trying to call it abstract hybrid because it's got a mix of uh, abstract with representational. So there's a hybrid mix of it. Um, so yeah. you I mean, cropped it that much. Yeah, I just cropped it because I mean, we wanted to do a vertical right. piece. So typically, who are the types of people that are um, looking into purchasing your pieces? They want work that means something, or they want a piece that means something. It's not just uh, decoration. Yeah. Like they, I think people will, will hopefully come to us. I'm not trying to interrupt. No, please do. Something please. that's not just, you know, not just decoration, not just going to match, but it's going to have a little bit more uh, deeper meaning. Uh, for them or into it meaning so. and feel and it's more than just pretty that's one of the things that we say a lot or it's more than just pretty so Jeff if we can stick this up on what oh, advice yeah. can you give someone who is developing a space to make it their own especially when it comes to wall art then I, I say try to make the walls and some of the major stuff maybe a little bit more neutral and then add in your color and uh, stuff with wall art that means something to you. And if you're, if you're supporting a local artist, I think that that has a, a lot of meaning. But I think when you also gain a relationship with the person that you're buying it from, I think that's mm. a huge, huge thing too. Buy a work of art and build around it um, yeah. based on if you love that piece so much, you can work around it, but you can also do your space and you can find a piece that feels like it fits in, feels like it fits your style, feels like you have a connection with somebody. I think you can fit good sized pieces in small spaces if you want that impact, um, but also you can fit multiples of small pieces to do the same, same type of thing. For sure. <laughs> well, Jeff, John, thank you so much. And thank you, Allie. 
When you go to the Cincinnati Museum Center, you can see all kinds of wild animals on display. But did you ever think about how that rare snow leopard or that bird ended up on display? We went behind the scenes with a taxidermist to find out more about his passion for preserving plants and animals for future generations to see. Take a look. From the word go, I was always interested in nature and fascinated with nature and animals in particular, and I just loved watching them. And uh, my dad was a hunter and took me out hunting, and we would get uh, ducks, pheasants, rabbits, things like that. And I just wanted to preserve them for their beauty and the texture, that love the fur, the feathers, the colors, the textures. And so I just learned taxidermy in order to, to preserve these things and try to bring them back to life or just kind of give them life again. And um, to mount up, say, a bobcat like that, it probably would be um, five to six hours of work um, to do it right. Um, and then, of course, depending on the base, like this base was homemade. If you had create a base with habitat, that adds more time onto it. Taxidermy or preservation of, of animals for display purposes, exhibit purposes, your kind of your your main goals are accuracy, aesthetics, and just the quality that to make it look as alive as possible. Um, with preservation for research purposes, your uh, major concerns are data about the animal. There's a lot. There's a uh, a big program here to do study skins of birds, where birds are preserved uh, that are, are road kills, hit windows, things like that that people bring in or people find. It's important to get all the information and data about that animal, where it was found, when the bird is skinned, um, where the animal uh, measurements are taken, tissue samples are taken, uh, weights are taken. There's a lot of things that are, are recorded about that animal before it is actually preserved. And then it is preserved in such a way that it saves space so that you can put a num large number of these specimens on, in a drawer on a tray and slide it because there's hundreds if not thousands of specimens that need to be kept and information is all put on a tag and then kept with the specimen. So you don't want it to necessarily look lifelike but you want it to uh, the information about it and in the future if they want tissue samples, feather samples, measurements off, the, off certain parts of the body they'll be preserved for that. I've always viewed it as kind of a preservation of the beauty of animals in a artistic way and in a flattering way. Uh, I will not do mounts of squirrels playing golf or frogs playing cards and things like that. I like to, I like to think that I'm maintaining respect for the animal and to show off its, its, its beauty. And um, I, I like, and one reason I kind of want to do it for museums is because it really has a purpose to, for education and um, uh, preservation of the species uh, in, in the natural world so people will appreciate them. And if people can't see them in zoos or out in nature, uh, they can at least see a, a mounted example of it and appreciate it. Wow. Coming up on Cincy Lifestyle, keeping you and your loved ones safe. We'll talk with a company making face masks that are not only effective, but also comfortable. We'll find out the comfort secret to their coverings. Plus, winter is coming. Or as they said on the show, winter's coming. We'll speak with Jayco Waterproofing about the importance of sealing the cracks and crevices in your foundation and outside walls before bad weather hits. Got all that and a whole lot more coming your way in just a few minutes. When you think of face masks, there are some common complaints. You know, they're too restrictive, they're too hot, and many are only one-time use. But there's one company that's looking to change the way people feel about masks, all while keeping you and your loved ones safe. And to tell us more, I want to welcome Josh Gibson, the CEO of Braddock USA. Thank you so much for talking to us, Josh. Thanks for having me very much. I appreciate being on. Absolutely. All right. First, tell us what makes your face mask different than other ones. The main uh, difference is uh, in our interior linings. Um, so the interior lining that we use for our masks is a sport fabric. 
So it's very common fabric that's used uh, for golf shirts or any type of athletic wear like Nike and Adidas, gym, gym clothes, you know how they breathe pretty well um, and they're moisture wicking. That's the exact fabrics that we use on the interiors of our mask. Um, you know, having work, been working in a factory, making these masks here in the United States, I myself wear them sometimes eight hours a day and we uh, have developed and you know researched on how to make the most breathable, comfortable mask um, that can be worn for eight hours a day without sticking to your face and, you know, retaining sweat. And this was our solution. So we did spend a lot of time, you know, uh, researching and developing um, the form of the mask and the design of the mask. And I think one of the, you know, design features that, we, that we've got is the pleats. So the pleats allow you to uh, form over your face uh, and, and it can shape to a, a different size faces because of these pleats. Uh, on the edge of the mask so it can go it can be small and then it expands to be a bigger mask uh, as you can see it's got a lot of coverage too as well and if your face your face is a little bit smaller it will reduce in size as well to cover a smaller face so these masks they're not just keeping us safe but also keeping our frontline medical workers safe tell us about that that's right so when we started the company, we, as, as you could see in those shots that we were a t-shirt printing shop and you could see these look like, you know, t-shirt fabrics. Well, it was t-shirt fabric. In March, we turned our t-shirt printing company fully over to making masks. And the very first project that we undertook was providing masks for frontline workers. And we decided that every single purchase that you make at BraddockUSA.com will go towards donating masks to frontline workers, first responders, grocery store workers, people that are delivering foods to people, restaurant workers. You know, we still donate thousands of masks every week to people on the front lines. We're also looking, actively looking for, um, you know, places to make donations. We've made donations to hospitals, to nurses, to nursing homes. Uh, and we are seeking donations all the time to make in bulk. Uh, but also, we also have a list of uh, people that we donate to from ppe.org and we provide donations on a weekly basis. So that's part of the effort is every purchase goes towards donating masks. Wow, thank you for all the good that you're doing out there. And if people want to pick up some of these masks or learn more, how can they connect with you? Uh, the website is braddockusa.com and that's B-R-A-D-D-O-C-K-U-S-A.com. And every day for the next several weeks, there will be one special item on promo so you'll have to check back in on a daily basis to get the promo code for the day it'll be on the top of the website all right josh that sounds good thanks so much for talking to us today you got it thanks for having me have you noticed cracks on the interior or exterior of your home we checked in with jaco waterproofing to learn what warning signs to look for and how jaco can solve it Today we are going to be talking about concrete and brick seals. The home behind us, we are actually sealing the brick today. That prevents water from leaking in. If you have a wind blown rain, it prevents it from coming in in the mortar between your bricks. This also limits mildew growth as well as water penetration. The different types of surfaces that we can seal are brick, glazed brick, artificial stone, concrete block, landscape masonry, and poured concrete. We offer a couple different types of ceiling. The different types of ceiling just go to customize what the homeowner is wanting. We have a natural look for the ceiling. We have a high glossy um, that just gives your decorative concrete more shine that a homeowner may want. So typically when we do our sealant, our guys are only spraying one coat of the clear sealant. It is a deep penetrating sealant. It does look like water was sprayed onto your house, so it is a wet, sealant, but when it dries, it is completely clear. It gives it that natural look. So we typically do this type of service in the spring, summer, and fall. Fall is our most busiest or most effective season just due to coming up on winter. Winter, obviously with the cold weather and you have ice on your driveway and everyone throws out their de-icing salts, that does absorb water within your concrete. Absorbing water within the concrete can cause cracks, it can cause flaking, it can cause multiple issues with your concrete. Our sealant actually protects that. So if we get that done today or in the fall, like I said, is our best time, we can then seal that concrete and prevent all of those issues. 
It is important for homeowners and customers to know that the project timeline can vary depending on the project itself. So if you have a driveway and it's just the driveway seal with maybe four or so slabs of concrete, that could take maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Whereas a whole brick house like this, this could take half a day to maybe a full day. So if it is a home or a driveway that actually needs pressure washing done, we do offer that service. We come out and pressure wash, which does turn into a two-day job. Pressure washing would be that first day to get everything spotless and cleaned. And then we also come back the second day and to seal up everything that was needed. We do offer a free estimate. Feel free to give Jayco a call as well as visit our website and we will come look at your home. Now for more information in regards to surface sealing with Jayco, visit their website, jacowaterproofing.com or give them a call in your area. Mona? And we'll be right back with more Cincy Lifestyle right after the break, so stay with us. Well, welcome back. And coming up tomorrow here on Cincy Lifestyle, the Davis Cookie Company. Mm, and we love yum. them. Yeah, they're opening up <laughs> their first brick and mortar store. And we'll talk to the owner about why now is the right time. And she'll also tell us about some of the delicious cookies that you can enjoy. Can't wait for that. We also embrace the need for speed and take a trip back to Eastern Corvettes. We'll tell you the story behind some of these classics and why they are building a mini Corvette. Vroom. All that and so much more happening tomorrow, Mona, right here on Cincy Lifestyle. And I am a vet fanatic. So thank you so much for checking us out. Uh, be sure to visit us on our social media platforms. Give us a holler if you can. Whatever you do, though, get out there today and make it a great day. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, hit that subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, make it a great day.